All right, everyone, Trump has come out and said talking is not the answer on North Korea. I, I happen to agree, but uh, keep this in mind. If Trump says that he, he's no longer interested in talking with the North Korean regime because they're being stupid right now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to launch out an, an all-out strike on Kim Jong-un. Unfortunately, even Trump, who is at least tackling the issue, is half-assing it. Uh, Obama, he was all about, well, red lines and sanctions, and that never worked. Like, they continued to develop. But Clinton gave them... Clinton thought appeasement was the way to go. Bush thought simply threatening them, uh, making a red line that they would re repeatedly cross on purpose was the way to go. Obama said, well, we'll let them collapse. We'll just sanction them. Trump has come in and said, no, we need to be a bit more forceful than these uh, morons that we've had for presidents lately. I happen to strongly agree, but the problem is he's not being tough enough. Trying to cut off their oil supply will do nothing. China will skirt any such thing. They'll buy oil and they'll sell it at a premium to the DPRK. They'll make money that they'll trade it for coal as well. It's all that they'll do. And then, of course, it justifies other people's reaction about the U.S. around the world. Oh, they're being bullies. Yes. We're being bullies by saying that we're going to stand up to a state that repeatedly threatens to launch atomic weapons at non-atomic states surrounding them, as well as repeatedly threatens to fire missiles towards uh, our bases in Guam. That's bullying. We're world policing again. We're being imperialistic. Now, there's a difference. Saddam Hussein was sitting there in the middle of the Middle East, Gaddafi too, and all these others. And we fucked around in the Middle East, uh, North Africa and South Asia, over and over and over again towards people that hadn't really done anything to us. That were just resisting our attempts to draw them into the West. And we said, okay, we're just going to get rid of them and call it liberation. That's world policing. That's economic imperialism. With North Korea, we have been markedly more restrained. For decades and decades, we have technically still been at war, by the way, with North Korea. We, we never signed any peace accords with North Korea. The Korean War technically has been going on since the day it began, nonstop. It, it, when people say Afghanistan, our longest war, no, it's Korea is our longest war. It starts back in the 1950s and has continued this entire time. Okay, so, so we had a, 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 tr a truce of sorts and people sort of hammered out a border that becomes, you know, a, a gigantic miles wide no man's land of landmines and pillboxes and stuff. The most heavily militarized spot in the planet. You, you think Afghanistan is flush with weapons. The DMZ is basically, I mean, uh, basically a one giant explosion if someone steps on the wrong spot. That's what Korea is. And it shouldn't be that way. I mean, you've got two groups of people. They're speaking the same lingo. They just got different governments that fucking hate each other. Uh, I, I would be sad, honestly, if I were living in Korea. On either side, I would say, well, why are we doing this? It doesn't make any sense. Ultimately, though, I've had some people say, well, North Korea has more of a claim to reunification than South Korea does. Uh, who, under whose subjective opinion? Some strong man that claims to be a, a divinely born has a right to rule the entire peninsula when other people have said, no, we're not dealing with that. By the way, the ROK would win in a war. The, the, D, the DPRK couldn't even stand up to just the Republic of Korea. Atomic weapons aside, they don't have the firepower to, to make up for the enormous technological gap. It's like people have said, well, the last time we were in Korea, we got our asses handed to us. And that was because of Chinese involvement and the fact that we had not modernized our military. We were fighting with World War II era technology largely at the time. They had gotten then modern early 50s era tech from the Russians and from the Chinese, you know, from Russia. So they had better technology in some <laughs> regards than we did. We were going around the Sherman tanks still and stuff like that. It didn't make any sense, and that's really when we lost, which we did, uh, in Korea, that really spurned the technological progress that we made throughout the 50s and 60s, which launched us ahead, which made us number one in the technological world. Now, the Western sphere then began to develop more rapidly as communism ground down the economies of the Eastern Bloc states. Uh, but it wouldn't be the same today if we were involved with Korea. 
When Trump says talking's not the answer, though, it's a vague statement. A lot of people, if if they like Trump, they assume, well, we're going to take out Kim Jong Un and we support it. It's a good thing. If they don't like Trump, they say, oh, Trump is going to start World War III and we oppose it. It's a bad thing. First and foremost, it would not be World War III if we got involved with the DPRK. China will almost certainly not get involved. If they did, it would be because the DPRK had pissed everyone off so much that they no longer could restrain themselves from invading, in which case China might actually be on our side. And if not, they're going to remain neutral and just... Uh, grab up some of those mineral supplies in parts of the country, which they would. And who cares? Uh, as long as Kim Jong-un is gone and the North Korean regime dissolves and most of Korea is reunified, it's a lot easier to deal with China than it is to deal with the DPRK. As the Chinese the government itself knows, why do you think twice now they've voted for sanctions? Does that sound like they're, they're gung-ho to defend the DPRK? No, what they're hoping is that if the West sanctions them, that it'll calm things down, but it won't calm things down. Uh, they're wrong. We've seen this before. It's happened before. Uh, the DPRK is never going to calm down. Their end goal is develop a deterrent that's strong enough so that they can invade South Korea and probably avoid any retaliation from anyone other than South Korea. That's what their end goal is. Reunification. It's the stated end goal of both sides of Korea. They just have different ways they want to go about it. The DPRK intends to go eventually the militaristic route while they pay lip service to diplomacy that never actually happens and the south korean leadership like their their uh leader there in the wake of president park you know getting forced out because she was a cult member and, and just fucking crazy they uh he's talked about oh yeah we'll just we're gonna talk to them and open up uh you know talks again it's not going to work. You can talk for a thousand years. They're never going to agree to democratize their nation. It's never going to happen. You can get some economic cooperation as long as they're the ones primarily benefiting from it. They take that money or those resources and put it into their missile program or something. That's the way North Korea operates. Any time that they can extract even the most minute concession, it goes right into their military to develop that deterrent that they want for their long-term goal that I'm sure, I'm 100% sure this is the goal a sub-base deterrent that keeps the U.S. from getting involved when the ROK is under attack. They're hoping that they can do that. If they can accomplish that, they can reunify nor uh, the whole Korean peninsula. It will be under North Korean leadership. They will enslave some millions of people in the Republic of Korea. Our involvement would at that point be limited to airlifting and, and docking there and getting as many people out as we can before the uh, new Iron Curtain falls across the whole peninsula. That would be what we're limited to. And then when they inevitably go after the Japanese, because they say, oh, well, yeah, you know, a hundred years ago, you slaughtered a bunch of Koreans, so we're going to retaliate against you now that we're powerful enough to do so. Then you have a World War-style situation. Something far, far worse. Or maybe not a World War, because, you know, is Russia going to get involved? They're going to say, huh, you go fight it out, kids. Uh, no, but we would get involved, and by then, Korea would have significant missile and nuclear technology. And if they absorb, by the way, all the technology in South Korea, the industry there, a bunch of scientists, oh, it'll make their job ten times easier. It took them a long time to develop atomic weapons. It'd only take them a few years to develop at least boosted fission. What are we supposed to do then? When they have, you know, when they do have a nuclear arsenal on par with like India or Pakistan or something like that, when they achieve one, 200 uh, kiloton weapons instead of, you know, 10, 15 kilotons, we're talking uh, Hiroshima sized devices that they're using right now. What if they develop something 10 times worse? What are we supposed to do when they fire one at Tokyo? There's, no, there's nothing we can do. They'll have a sub base deterrent. At that point, they'd also have millions of additional soldiers is there any force in the world that's really willing to deal with that situation or will people just again as they're doing now vainly hope that they are contained north korea is not contained at any given time they could invade south korea all they need is the deterrent it's the capstone of their military capabilities why do you think that they don't care about all this other tech why do you think they persist in using antiquated technology for virtually everything else they're pumping every available dime that they can get into missiles and atomic testing. 
because they know that's the only thing that they need. They can use old old style weapons. They can modernize them later. They don't care. That's really the end goal. So talking is not the answer. Trump is correct. It's just that his idea is, oh, we're going to cut off their oil sales. Maybe a targeted strike, which probably won't happen. It should. It should have happened the second that they fired a missile over Japan. The Japanese should have retaliated. They should have said, this is an act of war. We're getting directly involved. Fuck off Kim Jong-un. And then if the North Koreans retaliated against their targeted strike, they say, hey, South Korea, we're your ally. You get involved. U.S., same thing. And China, you stay out of it because otherwise you're going to be facing atomic reprisal. And they would. The U.S., Japan, and South Korea teaming up against a foe would not be a pretty sight. The foe wouldn't last long. It doesn't matter who it is. Unless it was Russia. Russia is the only state that could weather. China doesn't have, at this point, enough of a nuclear deterrent to stop us from doing what we want to do in Asia. Especially when it involves attempts uh, to undermine South Korea, threats and, and, you know, acts of war at this point, really, against Japan. It used to be the only acts of war in the past from North Korea have been, you know, largely directed at, well, they fired artillery at some South Korean island that's disputed territory. And so they say, well, we can fire at it if we want. It's disputed. You don't technically fully own it. You just have people there. And they say, okay, but we're sorry. You, you know, you, let's, let's put more, let's have some talks. We'll go, we'll go and, and shake hands and gloss things over. And it works. Yeah, they do this repeatedly. But they haven't really targeted the Japanese before. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a different story. The way they're acting isn't the same. That gets people upset. It upsets their apple cart. I wonder why. Yo, yeah, oh, they fired a missile over our country. Don't worry, though. It's normal behavior. No, it's not. It's, it wouldn't be considered normal behavior for any other nation in the world. Can you imagine what would happen if, if China were to do this to a nation? If China fired a missile over Japan, what do you think would happen? Universal condemnation, people would be going haywire. Every, everyone in the U.S. would have a mental breakdown. Oh, God, World War III is starting. North Korea is, is very basic in its atomic technology and its missile technology. People still have this weird worry that it would lead to a worldwide depopulation. No, it wouldn't. They have a few primitive atomic weapons. They're a threat to South Korea. They're a threat to Japan. They're not a direct threat to the United States. Hopefully, we can manage to uh, get things so that it stays that way. But it never will unless we're willing to act because they're going to say, oh, those cowardly Americans, they're not going to do shit. We can bully our neighbors as much as we want. Shy of dropping an atomic weapon on one of them, the U.S. will never actually do anything to us. That's the goal. That's about all. Peace out.